Good day, everybody. Uh, my name is Jessica Rosbondek. I'm the Executive Administrative Assistant here at Dental Services Group. I am excited and pleased to introduce Dennis Urban in his presentation on Getting the Edge on Removables with Dental Services Group. Dennis Urban is a general manager for one of our labs and technical advisor to Dental Services Group. He's also an internationally recognized speaker and internationally published author. Dennis, thank you so much for being with us here on Wednesday, March 25th. And now I turn it over to you to take it away and enlighten all of us. Okay, thank you, Jessica. I appreciate it, the kind words, and I'm glad to be here today. Um, and hello, everybody, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. Um, you know, as a removal technician for over 40 years, I'm happy to share some exciting news on the technical advances in venture technology. <clears throat> today, we're going to have an overview on uh, both printed and mill technology on digital dentures. We'll also go through some important aspects of analog denture procedures. So let's look at the outline of the presentation. We're going to talk about denture technology, looking back and moving forward. The tools of record taking for digital and analog full dentures. The reduction of chair time and adjustments on removables. Digital versus analog on full denture, on full denture techniques. Occlusal schemes, including lingualized occlusion and central occlusion. Case design, milling and printing techniques, patient acceptance, and communication with the dental laboratory. So we're in a great challenge now. Uh, <clears throat> we're at this point now, we're at a point now with the uh, analog and digital denture, uh, dentistry on digital dentures where we've come a long way. You know, a few years ago we were, uh, you know, we were not at as advanced, as advanced as we are now, especially on the printed side. So we're gonna compare both printed and um, mill technology today. So the great challenge is uh, we, we need to apply uh, the scientific knowledge from the analog side over the digital side. And you know, looking back at uh, dental technology, on denture technology, we really hadn't advanced too much in, over the years, except from what, maybe for like the last five or six years. So if you see this picture here, we can see George Washington's dentures on top of the photo. Um, they were made of lead and whalebone. And on the lower part of the uh, uh, photo, we have a picture of a vulcanite denture, which was a hard rubberized type denture uh, back in the 50s and 60s. Moving forward, you could see a lot of different advances that we made uh, in, uh, in venture technology. So we come a long way. Now we have highly aesthetic denture teeth and unsurpassed denture-based materials. As you can see here, many fine materials out on the market that make the denture not look like a denture, but look like natural dentition and natural gingiva. We could max the existing gingiva on a patient. As you can see in this photo here, some beautiful denture-based stain and some beautiful denture teeth to make it look more natural. And we'll talk about applying denture-based stain later on to make dentures look more aesthetic. We can mimic natural gingiva, gingiva anatomy on wax triangles utilizing artistry and various shaded waxes. As you can see here, this is a nice characterized uh, wax up here with different colors to match the patient's natural gingiva in the triangle. And now we can print and mill accurate aesthetic dentures with amazing fit, form, and function. But where are we heading in denture technology? Well, all the surveys are uh, pointing towards a growth in incre and increasing full denture cases, implant dentures, and partial dentures across the country. Um, and these are dentures where or replacement dentures, uh, they're dentures where patients are, um, want to look more aesthetically pleasing, uh, implant dentures with over dentures and hybrid type cases, and partial dentures with uh, metal free partials. And that's a whole other seminar we'll get into at another time, but uh, the bottom line is the patient wants function and they want aesthetics. More income opportunities for dentists, dental laboratories, and dental material manufacturers. More people need dentures now than ever before. The industry predicts tremendous growth now through 2050. And the experienced denture technicians are the guides for dentist and patient success in denture prosthesis. And this is a quote from Dr. Stephen Wagner, prosthodontist, who has uh, really uh, helped out with the launching of the Lucitone printed denture. And uh, a few months ago, I was at the uh, Seattle study group meeting, and I heard a quote from Dr. Christian Coachman. And he said, professionals who understand dentures are the ones who understand smile design. And I agree because, you know, with the knowledge of occlusal schemes and denture setups, we understand smile design, you know, and uh, that's why I try to stress with even ceramic technicians and ceramists around, around the world, 
they really should learn how to do uh, and the, have, get the knowledge of denture setups first before they uh, apply their their uh, approach to on the uh, on the crown and bridge side with uh, ceramics. But we have to move in the right direction, and I mentioned before, digital and analog they go together. You know, we have to go in the right direction with the uh, traditional analog science scientific uh, backgrounds and apply them on the digital side also. And the key is communication. You know, we need to utilize the same fundamental prosthodontic processes to make a digital denture as we always have. The clinician still needs to communicate and provide the technician with the necessary information for a functional case. Digital denture technology is still evolving and improving at a rapid pace. The basic knowledge of prosthodontic principles, including providing accurate impressions, is even more important in the digital world because many details can now be seen on a large screen which could not otherwise be detected. And we'll take a look at these uh, photos later on in the presentation. Dentists still need to understand the important, importance of capturing accurate maxillomandibular records, vertical dimension, and centric relation. And technician, technicians need to continue to analyze ridge relationships and then select appropriate anterior and posterior teeth for the desired occlusal scheme. So we're creating more personal service and building a more intelligent design platform with digital dentures. You're engaging your patients, empowering your employees, and we're reinventing productivity and business processes to optimize operations and transform products. Let's take a look at the best practices on full dentures. Well, we have all these communication tools uh, at our fingertips, and at times we just can't uh, uh, communicate and design and plan the proper denture for a patient especially on implant dentures. So it's really important the communication is, that is still there between the dentist the dental laboratory and the dental laboratory uh, practitioner. So we depend on a clinician for the, your clinical knowledge and training, the assessment of the patient, appropriate treatment planning, detailed RX information, digital photography, and quality materials. And the communication from us at the laboratory, the certified dental technician, we depend on our technical expertise, our knowledge of procedures and materials, the appropriate feedback to dentists on impressions, bites, shades, etc. Case planning with the clinician, digital photography, and of course, quality materials. Let's look at some of the problems that in the past that we've had with full dentures. There's been compromised stability, poor neuromuscular coordination, including occlusion, low tolerance of the mucosal tissue for removable to acrylic base, especially on lower dentures, and the patient's desire for more stability and comfort and the comfort level of the dentist compromised due to excessive share time. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on, I'll elaborate on that more, uh, because the comfort level with removables is, uh, is, is pretty low, uh, according to a survey that was taken by Dental Products Report a number of years ago. Um, and it seems to increase uh, the, the, uh, the dentist um, ability to, to make dentures more accurately and uh, have less of a, uh, uh, more of a comfort level, I would say, is, uh, is increased with digital dentures. The goals of the final outcome, we want to create natural aesthetics, enhance facial appearance, compensate for lost soft tissue, enhance function, function with the right occlusal scheme. We'll talk about lingualized occlusion and centric occlusion in a little while. We want to create a denture with longevity, impact resistance, and bacteria resistance. And some of the materials that we've had on the market in, in past years, especially on the printed side, uh, attracted bacteria. They didn't have that impact resistance or high flexural strength, but now we do. We have those materials now. And the elimination or reduction of adjustments on occlusion of sore spots. Uh, that's the number one thing that takes up that operatory time in the dental office. Common mistakes in fabricating a full denture, poor treatment planning, distorted final impression, inaccurate master models, insufficient occlusal records, and the poor choice of materials. Let's go over the clinical protocol for removables. First visit, we have our preliminary impression. Second visit, we make our custom tray final impression. Third visit, bite registration and occlusal records. Fourth visit, tooth setup and wax try-in. And the fifth visit is going to be the final insertion. So we're gonna to try to cut that down to four visits now. And we can, if, and a visit can be eliminated if a functional impression is taken inside the occlusal rim on a base plate and a bite registration is taken at the second visit. Or, if you utilize the patient's consisting dentures for impressions and occlusal records. So let's look at the best practices. The first, first visit on a preliminary impression, you wanna utilize a stock tray and take an impression with the quality alginate material. 
We want to make sure we capture all the uh, anatomical landmarks in the impression. If we good to get a good preliminary impression, more than likely we're going to have a nice final impression. The second visit is uh, usually a custom tray impression. We'll make a custom tray with reduced borders so you can border mold the impression and we can get a nice anatomical functional impression and we can get all the anatomical landmarks including retromold pads, hamula notches, frenums, and everything we need for a successful fit invention. And third visit, by registration and occlusal records. You know, we want to make sure the patient is in an upright position. We want to place the uh, contoured occlusal rim and base plate in the mouth. And we depend from the clinician the information on the information we need for a successful denture setup, including midline, cuspid line, high lift line, all those areas that we need of information we need to do a, a, a successful setup. Hey, Dennis, that's where we come to our first polling question. So when prescribing full dentures, do you provide the laboratory with all the necessary markings on a contoured occlusal rim? So audience, we are curious when prescribing full dentures, do you provide the laboratory with all the necessary markings on a combined, uh, sorry, on a contoured occlusal rim? And we'll just keep this up for a couple more seconds to gather information out there. So we only have about 30% participation. Uh, we'd love your feedback on this. Again, when prescribing full dentures, do you provide the laboratory with all the necessary markings on a contoured occlusal rim? And thank you so much for your participation. Dennis, looks like we have 59% yes. All right, good. Thank you, Jessica. And thank you, everybody, for taking that poll. And this is important. I'm glad to see that response here because uh, without that information, it makes it difficult to, uh, to do a successful setup. You know, with all this information we have on the occlusal rim, uh, not only on the analog side, but on the digital side also. You know, we need this information from uh, our, our clinicians. And, uh, you know, we have the intraoral space. Uh, you know, 40 millimeters intraocclusal space, we have to fill in with an upper and lower denture. And without all these information, this information, it's, it'll be difficult to do that. So we, we utilize the anatomical landmarks and the inf information we get on the occlusal rim. Okay. Jessica, can you close that out first? So, all right, here we go. I got it. Here we go. Thank you. So this sorry. Is upper, uh, wax rim dimensions. Um, um, an average is about 22 millimeters on the uh, upper wax rim from the periphery to the incisal edge. And the occlusal width is about eight to 10 millimeters, you know, and we try to contour this for the clinician. So it's less adjustments in the office, for cutting wax and reducing wax and melting wax and trying to get it in the right contoured, uh, occlusal contour. And we try to do this in the laboratory. Same with the lower um, uh, We lost you, Dennis. Yep, I just, uh, it's, it's froze up on me here. One second, I'll, I'll get back. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so the lower wax rim dimensions, uh, an occlusal width of about 8 to 10 millimeters, on an average about 18 millimeters from the, papilla, from the periphery to the incisal edge. So um, the wax rim height covers about two-thirds of the retromolar pads. And, uh, that's about where we're going to set our second molar when we do our denture set. So all this necessary information we spoke about before, we'd love to get in the laboratory so we can, we can do a successful setup. We need the midline, the canine line, the smile line, and it approved the occlusal plane. And eliminating one appointment, like I mentioned earlier, the patient's existing dentures are in good shape. We can utilize those dentures and take a border mold, take a wash impression, and actually to take a nice bite registration also and get that information back to us at the laboratory. So we can pour out models and we can have everything in one, one, uh, one visit. And we can proceed then with the uh, denture wax setup. And also another alternative is taking a functional impression inside the bite registration with the base plate. And this will give us a nice functional border mold of the uh, uh, impression. And then we can get our information on the bite, uh, bite registration and occlusal. And then we will do our denture setup. And the fourth visit is our tooth setup and wax try-in. We're going to check occlusion, phonetics, and shade. We're going to make sure the aesthetics are pleasing to the patient. And the fifth visit is the final insertion. Check for fit, form, and function. Check for pressure spots and equilibrate the occlusion. And we're noticing with the uh, on the digital side of uh, digital dentures, uh, well, on dentures, it's less equilibrating in the office and pretty much elimination of sore spots with the accuracy of the scans that we're getting. 
So let's look at the traditional, traditional workflow in a dental laboratory. You know, the first step is pour a model, make a custom tray. Second is pour a final impression, make an occlusal rim. Third step would be articulate the case, set up a denture and wax, and then process and finish, and we send it to the, uh, to the operator or the clinician. Now, on the printed side of denture workflow in a laboratory, everything looks the same, except the third step. When we're doing our, our denture try-in, we're actually scanning the impression or model and scanning the bite registration and designing it and printing it for try-in. And then we print it, and then we print the final denture. And we'll go through this step-by-step step in, in a few minutes. So instead of getting this in the, uh, file, on the uh, denture try-in, the nice, nice wax try-in here, you're gonna get something that looks a little bit different and it's gonna take a little getting used to. So uh, all this anatomical wax up, so all these anatomical wax up you see here with the characterization and everything, uh, you can get it uh, if it, we can take the time to do that on a printed try-in, but usually the printed try-in is looking like this. So it's more of a, more of a monolithic looking uh, try-in. And uh, so we'll talk about uh, how we can make this look more aesthetic uh, for the patient in a little while. And some of the steps that I've taken to make these printed try-ins look more aesthetic. But they're very accurate. Um, you still wanna check occlusion, wanna make sure aesthetics are pleasing to the patient. And what's great about these also is if any adjustments that have to be made in, on the uh, occlusion, you can either grind down the teeth, take a new bite registration. If the midline is off, you can, uh, you can uh, put, um, make with a Sharpie, draw a line where the midline is uh, off. If the cant is off, you can draw a line with a Sharpie. And all this information gets rescanned and puts into, gets put into the software and merges with the original case. So on a clinical side, same procedure. Everything is the same except for that fourth uh, visit with the denture tooth uh, wax try-in. We're going to have a printed try-in instead. I know a lot of you are probably asking about what about intraoral scanning for full arch cases? And I get asked this a lot uh, because a lot of dentists uh, ask me, you know, Dennis, it's, it, you know, it seems to be totally digital on the, uh, on the laboratory side, but really not on the clinical side, you know, with, uh, digital technology. And now that's because, you know, uh, the challenge of uh, intraoral scanning on full arch cases, if you were able to do full arch scanning in the operatory, it would be make, make it a lot easier and make it fully digital. Uh, and we're making steps towards that. I'm gonna go through a couple of different scenarios here, but let's talk about scanning. Scanning is possible, but still not perfect. Additional steps must be taken and case selection is critical. We can use an indelible pencil to help with stitching issues when scanning particular arch, uh, where there are a few landmarks for reference. And cases with tissue texture and landmarks, they'll be easier to scan uh, and make sure that we capture all anatomical landmarks in these digital impressions. Now, there's an article out, uh, it's a, a, from 3Shape for Professor uh, Dr. LaRusso, and it's uh, a dentalist scan strategy. And he seems to have a pretty successful scan strategy for fully dentalist patients. And uh, there's a link, if you wanna take a picture of this your screen here, there's a link for this, at, uh, for a PDF that you can download uh, on 3Shape. And it's designed for optimal scan experiences of the dentalist patients with 3Shape trios. Um, and we also have these um, PDFs at, at DSG if you need them. But what this, uh, Dr. Russo is, uh, LaRusso is doing, as you can see here, he's going through different directions on scanning the upper arch and the lower arch and capturing all the anatomical landmarks, the periphery, and he's been very successful with it. And he elaborates more in, on this in, on this article. So this has been very successful for him and other clinicians uh, with intraoral uh, fully edentulous uh, case scanning. The case scans that I've gotten back and a lot of the people I know have gotten back has not, have not been as accurate. You know, uh, they've, they've been okay with uh, immediate dentures because with immediate dentures, many times we're relining those dentures chair side, uh, but um, you know, and uh, with the fully edentulous cases, it's been difficult. There's been an article as we was released just in February at the Journal of Prosthodontic Research. It was an in vivo feasibility study uh, with computerized optical impression making of edentulous jaws on 29 patients. And there's a link attached to this also here in this, in this uh, slide here, which you can go on and, and look at this article. But the conclusions was, uh, were, uh, with the limitations of the present study, the investigated st uh, scanners were not able to currently fully replace conventional impression for the fabrication of a complete denture. In other words, they weren't capturing all the anatomical landmarks needed for a successful case. So there's a lot of uh, different views on this right now. We are coming along very nicely. I, I believe in the next year and the next two years, we're, we're gonna have that technology to fully scan uh, and fully edentulous case in, in, in intraorally uh, in the dental office. 
And this was the, uh, some of the photos, uh, much different than the photos you saw from Dr. LaRusso, of uh, the scan directions of uh, early evangelist scans that they did in this research. So it's pretty interesting material, and I hope we come a lot further because it's going to make life a lot easier for all of us and eliminate a lot of time on making the digital dentures. And even though we're eliminating time now on, on production and with uh, chair side adjustments, uh, we still, we're still coming uh, along with this, uh, this technology. Let's touch on analog denture setups for a little while. I'm not going to get too in-depth in on analog denture setups, but I, I, I feel it's relevant to talk about this now because we're going to be talking about occlusion when it comes to digital setups also. So traditional setups. You know, we have this intro-occlusal intro space that we talked about before, and we have to fill it with the right information with denture teeth and wax. That's a 40, average on a 40 millimeter intraocclusal space. And this takes time and expertise and takes you know, knowledge of where to put these teeth and follow the uh, right occlusal scheme. This particular case is on, on uh, a fully adjustable articulator. So we have to mount these cases to the occlusal plane, plane of occlusion, the camper's plane, and the occlusal plane, as you can see here. And on this particular case, you see we have the information on the by registration on occlusal rim with the midline, cuspid lines, high lift line, and that's going to aid us in setting these denture teeth. And on this particular case, I'm following the occlusal plane or the campus plane when I'm setting these up on the articulator. There's a little notch on the incisal pin, and I go to the posterior part of the uh, articulator, I put a rubber band around the whole articulator, and gives, this gives me my plane of occlusion. And I try to set my models on the articulator according to this plane of occlusion. Everything's all set and, and re uh, articulated, and now we're ready to set our denture teeth. And when I set denture teeth, I usually set up the upper anteriors first and the lower anteriors, upper posterior teeth, first put two by cuspids, and then the lower two by cuspids, and then I'll complete the uh, denture setup. This particular case, we're showing a, a full lower setup and then setting up the upper uh, uh, teeth according to the lower set. So we have all this information here. We're setting up the upper, upper denture teeth. Now we have a, a fully functional centric occlusion. We do some working and balancing. Make sure there's no interference. Uh, we should do some adjustments on this, and then we're ready to wax up our denture. So it takes a lot of time to do this. You know, it's very artistic, and very, you need the knowledge to do this. And, uh, and uh, it's very rewarding after you're done and looking at your work and saying, seeing something that you produced from nothing and have something that's going to fill that uh, intraocclusal space and, and for that patient. And then we have our wax contour with the try-in, and we do a nice anatomical type wax up. Denture triumph. So things are going to be a little bit different now when we, do, we start talking about our printed triumphs. But how do we select the correct anterior teeth? Well, facial form usually e equals tooth form. So let's divide this face right here. We'll divide it in the middle, midline. There's our uh, pupil line, which is our occlusal plane, a smile line, a midline. And there's our uh, cuspid lines. So all this information we take into where we're setting up denture teeth. So, you know, many times I'll get a Facebook transfer at the, uh, it's just along with the case, and I get all this information uh, uh, along with the case. It's almost like having the patient next to me at the bench, so I, I know how to set these denture teeth. So, but what we have to determine is the mold. And if we look at the shape of an upper arch, it actually is a shape of a central. It could be a tapering ovoid shape, it could be a square shape, uh, a shape or a tapering shape. But all these years when I picked out anterior teeth, I went by the, the shape of the arch. And if we have a study model uh, from the existing denture, that helps also. We can also measure uh, on the bite registration on the, on the occlusal rim, cuspid the cuspid lines on the bite block. And then we go to the, we'll go to the tooth chart and that'll give us some recommendations of how to pick these denture teeth. So the concerns are the width of the six anteriors, the shape of the anteriors, the shape of the centrals, and of course the shape. I have some old photos here. You know, we talked about earlier, tooth form equal facial form. We have a square face, square tooth, square tapering, square tapering tooth, ovoid, ovoid tooth. Again, as you can see, the same information on this slide, only a different, different uh, layout. Sagittal and frontal consideration, considerations is, uh, you know, you look at the tips of the canines, they're usually equal to the width of the nose. And the width of the, filtrum, the centrals are usually uh, equal to the width of the filtrum. So there's a lot of anatomical landmarks we can go by. And um, wait till I, I show you some slides on the digital side of things, how to pick out denture teeth. Uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. So setting denture teeth to replicate nature. 
We want to look at harmonious aesthetics. We want something that's going to look natural and pleasing and the right materials. But what about using the correct denture teeth? Well, denture teeth, let's look at denture teeth now. You know, we want a denture tooth that's going to be homogenous material throughout the entire tooth. We want something that's going to have high mechanical strength, something that's going to be tissue friendly, plaque resistant, color stable, and have chip free clump grinding. We don't want a denture tooth where we're going to start grinding and get to a soft layer, especially with implant cases, because the, the patient's going to be wearing on these denture teeth a lot, lot sooner. So we want something that's going to wear like natural dentition. Same size as natural teeth, something with high wear resistance. And I like anterior teeth with lingual anatomy for better phonetics, as you can see on these de this denture here that I produced. Uh, this is going to help the patient speaking, especially new denture patients, that the, the tongue tends to slide off the lingual of the denture, uh, creating a lisping effect. When you have lingual anatomy and uh, perhaps a rugae, this eliminates that or reduces it. We want a wider occlusal surface on the teeth, you know, especially with partial dentures, you know, but uh, this, you know, it benefits and aids in chewing and swallowing when we have a wider occlusal surface, you know, so uh, uh, this is something to take into consideration. And Dennis, that brings up our next polling question. So do you provide the laboratory with a specific brand and mold of denture teeth for full dentures? Audience, we are curious if you provide the laboratory with a specific brand and mold of denture teeth for full dentures. I think we're at 40% participation in climbing, so a couple more seconds. Again, do you provide the laboratory with a specific brand and mold of denture teeth for full dentures? And we will end the poll. And it looks like we're about a half yes, half no. All right. That's great. You make our life easier. Thank you so much. Yeah, so it's, it's important, you know, especially, you know, a lot of clinicians have mold guides in the, in the dental office and uh, we have, uh, that helps us out too. But, uh, you know, the knowledge, uh, as, I'm, as I lecture around the country, uh, one of the biggest obstacles I, I come across is technician uh, picking out uh, denture teeth for, for cases. Uh, but if you look at all the information I gave you earlier, it'll make life easier using, utilizing the information. And if you do that for us, it makes life even more easier. So let's look at the uh, uh, setting up the anteriors, aesthetics and phonetics. <laughs> Upper and lower anterior setup. The anteriors are, are, are positioned individually and parallel to the pupil line. The lower incisal edges are parallel to the upper incisal edges. And guidelines for setting posterior teeth. You know, we have to determine the degree of the tooth also. We want to use, utilize a right up clue scheme. You know, 72% of laboratories use semi-anatomical and anatomical teeth. I'm not a big fan, fan of zero degree teeth, you know, because we were meant to chew and, uh, chew and uh, tear off food, uh, not chew like a cow. You know, so, uh, and also we have lingualized occlusion that um, we have, um, you know, we can utilize with implant cases. And we can utilize that, you know, because it takes the uh, off-axis stress on implants and on the ridge. These are some occlusal schemes as we see right here. Different degrees of teeth. Typically, the smaller the ridge, the smaller the degree of tooth, and greater the ridge, the greater the degree of the cuspal inclination. So we want to take that into consideration when we select the correct mold. We want to align the occlusal surfaces sort of towards the center of the cranium. And that's our Ferber Wilson. If you look on the right-hand side, the occlusal surfaces are not aligned to the center center of the cranium. And the only time I'll do this is when I'm utilizing lingualized occlusion. I'll have my curve of speed, but I won't have my curve of Wilson. So I'll have the lingual cusp of the upper going into the central fossa of the lower. And like I mentioned earlier, this is going to reduce any off-axis stress on the uh, implant or the ridge. The actual, in actual inclination of the posterior is positioned to the center of the cranium. And now we want to check on, or it's on setting posterior teeth. We want to make sure the central fossa of the teeth are on a lower ridge, it makes it more stable. Check our vertical inclination of the posterior teeth. Check our curve of SPI and our curve of Wilson. Again, we'll check it. A little review here. There's a curve of Wilson and a curve of SPI coming in later. We want a harmonious transition to the posteriors. We want a completed individual anterior setup and posteriors with harmonious inclination towards the anterior teeth. So we have a beautiful upper and lower, full upper and lower setup. And lingualized occlusion. Let's talk briefly about lingualized occlusion. 
Uh, these are the different occlusal schemes on here. What we're trying to do for the full denture patient, uh, maybe reduce uh, sore spots and resorption on the oral mucosal tissue. Tissue. We still get a lot of requests for lingualized occlusion on upper ca on full cases. Most of the requests we get on implant cases. It's a reduction of the lateral side-to-side -side forces of the implant when we utilize lingualized occlusion. And lateral, lateral forces could cause the implant to fail. The buccal cusps for the uppers are, po are, are situated towards the, uh, the cheek, and this eliminates any cheek binding also. And there's your final setup here, as we see here in the wax up stage. So now let's move on to fabricating a printed denture. And we'll keep in mind what we just talked about on the analog side as we're talking about fabricating a, a printed denture. So let's talk about printed case processing. We talk about, let's talk, we'll talk about digitation, case design, again with the printed try-in and the printed final denture. On the case digitation, we want to enter all the information we need to enter. This is a three-shape uh, software that we're using uh, because I want to enter all the patient's information and what kind of materials we're using. And then we're going to scan the model or scan the final impression. And the majority of the time we're scanning uh, models here. As you can see, uh, the, uh, the clarity uh, of the, uh, the model scan here, we're seeing things that we can never see before, like I mentioned earlier, on these scans. And the anatomy, little, I mean, every, every single detail we can see on these, on these scans. And then scanning the uh, bite registration, now, this is on a, a hinge articulator here. This is not my work here, by the way. I just wanted to show this as a reference. We want to make marks on the vertical wall of the model to aid in alignment. You know, uh, and right here, we'll take the articulator and put it into our three shape scanner to scan the bite registration. I do it a little bit differently. I, I, I mount this on a fully adjustable, a semi adjustable articulator on a magnetic articulator, and I use a scan spray. I'll take the models off the articulator and put it into our three shape scanner and scan the bite registration. And all that information will go into the software and we'll utilize it to, to design our case. Articulation with centric and lateral adjustments are featured in this software. The virtual articulator allows for centric and lateral excursions, therefore saving the dentist valuable chair time on adjustments. As we can see right here. Now this is only utilized when we have, we're printing our teeth or milling our denture teeth. We're, we're using uh, carded teeth, we can't do this. So we'll talk a little bit about more, that more when we talk about the, when we talk about the printed dentures here too. But uh, this really aids us in, uh, in the clinician and the dental technician with uh, less, uh, less adjustments occlusion. Our digital denture setups, you know, the digital articulation, the impressions are digitally articulated through the bite registration using special software. On the digital tooth setup, the denture teeth are placed following the arch shape and bite registration. The vertical height can be adjusted in the software to open or close the bite if necessary. And we can utilize full arch dentures, uh, denture tooth setups with this, uh, this software. The software proposal is reasonable and can be modified using the tools in the software. And using the software tools in every aspect of the digital wax cup can be adjusted and smooth for proper tooth shape, tissue shape, and border contours. So I showed before the uh, anatomical wax denture setup uh, that I, I did on, on the analog type denture. Uh, we can utilize this, uh, this contour also in the uh, three shape software. And uh, then we can apply some, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, about denture based stain or wax to make it look a little more aesthetic. And there's our completed denture design. At this point, we're happy with the denture design. We're, we're ready to print our uh, printed try-in. And with the Densply uh, printed denture that we're utilizing at DSG, it comes in various shades, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, bleach shade, three. So we, we have different shades now, you know, and um, uh, I mentioned earlier, we can adjust this, we can grind down the posteriors and take a new bite. We can take a wash impression if there are fit issues, and then we can rescan that and put it into the software. But how can we make these printed triangles look a little more natural? Well, there's a few things we can do. We can take the time and actually do some denture-based stain, put some denture-based stain on there, and make it look a little bit more, more natural. But this takes quite, quite a bit of time and it's, it's a little, little more uh, technique sensitive. And, and, and uh, uh, so I have an easier solution to this. I use a, a aesthetic colored wax, much like the waxes I use in the, uh, in the uh, analog triangles. And I apply it, I, a molten wax across the whole surface of the gingiva. And I pick up the anatomy that was designed in the, um, in the three shape software. 
So we have a more, more of an aesthetic looking type of printed triane than we would with the regular monolithic type of triane. Let's talk about printing the denture now. We scanned and designed it as we, as we did earlier. Now we're ready to print the denture. After we print it, we're gonna go through this step by step actually. We're gonna wash and recycle. We're gonna fuse and cure the denture teeth and we're gonna finish the denture. So let's talk a little bit about the material. What I like about this material, you know, a year or two ago with this material, the material that was out on the market, it wasn't that aesthetic. It actually attracted bacteria. Uh, the shades were off, it didn't look natural. But now with a printed uh, denture-based try-in from, um, from Lucitone, we have many different shades. The original shade, original opaque, light, light reddish pink, and dark reddish pink. Hey, Dennis, I'm gonna jump in real quick and move to the next polling question. Just want to let you know we're receiving some feedback um, on your voice coming in and out. Okay, all right. And then um, the next polling question, what digital denture systems have you used? What digital denture systems have you used? All right. I'm so sorry, I realized I forgot to launch the poll. What digital denture systems have you used? What digital denture systems have you used? Would love some feedback on this polling question. What digital denture systems have you used? And we are at about the 30 second mark. So ending the poll. All right. And looks like we're a little bit all over the board. Okay, good. So more, more with the digital uh, the printed denture from Densply. That's great. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me okay. Let's talk about the printer setup. Well, we send, we'll send the information to the printer now on the design denture. And you can see the supports that are on these, um, on these dentures here. Uh, so once they're printed, and this is not printed to full, uh, full capacity here. So uh, you know, once we print these, uh, we still have to um, uh, secure these in the uh, auto cure unit uh, to final cure. So when we take these out of the printer, we take off the supports. But as you see on lingually, we're leaving those supports on that denture because that's uh, it's still not fully cured uh, and light cured. So uh, we're going to leave those supports on there. We're going to clean it up with some denatured alcohol. We're going to wash it in an ultrasonic, blow the um, blow the uh, liquid off. And then we're ready for our denture assembly. So we're actually gonna be utilizing actual denture teeth for this, uh, this printed denture. They're not gonna be printed denture teeth, they're gonna be actually IPN 3D digital denture teeth. And if you familiar, you're familiar with Densply, you know, these are great teeth and they're aesthetic. And we're gonna be placing these in the denture base. Now in our next slide, you'll notice a complex chart. But the great thing in three shape is that the characterization points are set to indicate the position of the retromolar pads, canine points and ridge points, coupled with the use of pounds triangle and allow the software to pick out the mold for us so there's no guesswork on picking the correct mold. So we don't have to go through all that trouble. The software does this for us. And you can see that's all that information in the articulation genes in the software. And that'll evaluate from what we did with our scans, the size of the arch, the bite uh, registration information, everything we put into the, uh, into the uh, designing of this denture is gonna be taken into consideration when venture teeth are picked and selected. A lot of mold choices to choose from are the IPN uh, denture teeth. And the first thing we're doing is we have to condition these denture teeth. So they bond and fuse to the denture base. So the first material is called a fuse one material. And we're gonna actually warm up this uh, material on this warmer that you see on the right hand side and we're gonna condition the denture teeth. The next thing we're going to do is fuse these uh, denture teeth into the denture and into the uh, printed denture base. And we use something called the fuse two material. And these, the sockets for these denture teeth are exactly uh, correct so it can fit in these IPN uh, denture teeth. And the ridge lap on these IPN digital denture teeth have been uh, reduced so these fit in perfectly. And um, so we, we, I do usually do about four at a time with these. I'll put the fuse two material in there, then I'll light cure it for a few seconds. And then finally, I'll come over with a fuse three material. This is just the material to, to uh, fill in any gaps that we, we might have accumulated 
uh, well, with, where you're fusing in these denture teeth. But really, it just takes maybe about five minutes to do, and it really comes out great. And then, I, as I mentioned before, we still have to post-cure this material. It wasn't totally cured, so we put this in the post-cure unit for about another 25 minutes. And when it's, once it's cured, we take it out, we cut off these support structures, and then we finish and polish it. But the finishing part is, is very, very limited. I mean, you really don't have to do much fin finishing at all because you did a lot of this finishing in the software on the design of the, uh, the denture base. And there's your finished denture. So we have a nice, beautiful printed denture now, and uh, with the bond strength on this is amazing. You know, there, you, you go online, there's a lot of videos online, online with uh, people throwing this off ladders and off the roof and throwing it off floors and trying to break these denture teeth out of the denture base. But this actually fuses in with, fuses to the denture base, so there's really uh, no chance of breakage on these. There's your overview of the Lucitone printed denture, all the steps I mentioned earlier before. Uh, so, uh, no, it's, it's about a two hour, time uh, for eight cases and labor is about 80 minutes time. It's not really, it's, it's a reduced labor, but the product really comes out really well. I'm really happy with this uh, printed denture material that's out, that Dense White has. So let's look at the uh, features and benefits of both Lucitone uh, best printed dentures compared to analog. We've talked about before the excessive chair time on the analog side, numerous adjustments and consistency with occlusion. Patient acceptance was a problem and many clinicians comfort level was at a minimum. Lucitone, we have reduced chair time, little to no adjustments, digital free occlusion technology to reduce occlusional adjustments, better patient acceptance for fit, aesthetics, and function, peace of mind with final denture outcome. And what I like about this is you always have a digital file available for duplicate or replacement dentures in case something happens to the patient's denture. And, you know, in addition to all those features and benefits there, uh, there's something called a BAM factor. As you see, the, this lower, this bullet point on the bottom of the screen here, the BAM factor is a body activated material. So when the denture is, is placed, the strength of the material increases from 1500 joules per square meter to 3100 joules per square meter. And what does this mean? It just doubles the resistance to brace breakage. So the longer it's in the patient's mouth, the stronger it gets. And that's an excellent feature. I'm gonna talk a little bit about briefly on printed technology for hybrid tech tra transitionals. This is where we're starting to utilize at DSG now. So all that, all that time that you spend chair side with um, you know, um, hybrid cases, with doing chair side conversions, everything can be done for us now with the special technique that we developed at, at ESG. So all these access holes, holes are re ready to go and you can loot those temporary cylinders in chair side and have your nice uh, temporary tra hybrid transitional denture. We can elaborate more on this on another presentation. Now we're gonna move on to the Pro FX mill denture. The ProFX is our, 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 our name for our mill denture, digital dentures at DSG. We're utilizing the, uh, dens uh, the um, Ivoclar system for this for the mill denture. So let's talk about a simplified mill denture technique, denture, denture workflow. This is a simplified workflow. This is more an advanced workflow, which we'll, we'll get to later on. But the first appointment, we're asking, for, again, for a preliminary impression. And now we're going to be asking for a papillometer reading. Send it to the laboratory, we'll, we'll make the base plate and occlusal rims, utilizing that papillometer rating. And we'll elaborate on that papillometer rating in a little while. Then you'll have a take a functional impression and a bite registration on the second appointment. We'll design and scan and scan and design and print our, um, our, our try-in, send it back to the clinician for that third appointment to try it in. Then we'll mill the final denture in the laboratory. And the fourth appointment is, is the insertion. So I touched a little bit of, about the papillometer. What does, what does the papillometer do, do? We just, well, we rest it on the papilla, and I guess this is an average reading of where that, uh, that tooth and that, uh, that, that tooth, that incisal edge of the denture tooth is gonna wind up. I usually add about two to three millimeters on this, uh, this, this type of uh, reading. But what we'll do, we'll enter this papillometer reading into the computer when we're designing our denture, but not only that, it's gonna help us design our occlusal rim. So it's less time for you in the, in the dental office later as far as adjusting the occlusal wax and rim. Now let's talk about the mill denture uh, design, the design CAD. We're utilizing three shaped software in this particular case here. Indications of full dentures, single arch dentures, and immediate dentures. And what's great about this uh, system, they're actually utilizing the Ivoclar Vivident Tooth Library with Blue Lion, Vivident S, DCL, and Fenaris Teeth. And we have the option of actually using carded, using carded teeth or actually milling these denture teeth out and placing them in the denture case. 
is a full arch denture setup function, and exclusive clinical tools and workflow options, which we'll get to later. So this is the Avaclar Vivident Tooth Library, Panaris 2, Vivident S DCL, and Blue Line Teeth. And of course, we can do milled full arch setups also. The software allows for complete control to change the shape of the denture teeth, and it's important to be able to create the ideal occlusion context for single arch dentures against natural teeth. So I'll take a look at this uh, little video here. We're able to adjust the, oops, I'm sorry. So we're able to adjust the length of the tooth, bring it into occlusion. And it's a lot easier than uh, placing teeth in wax. We can make the uh, occlusal surface wider for more function. There's many things we can do with this software. Now we don't have to do a complete reset when a tooth needs to be removed. Removing molars and premolars molars is as easy as a click of a mouse. Let's take a look at this photo here. We want to remove, I think, a premolar on here. And we can do that rather quickly. And extracting teeth, this is one of my favorite features on this software here, you know, especially when immediate dentures, we can extract teeth on the software. So all we do is highlight that denture tooth Click on it, it eliminates the denture tooth. And we're ready to set up our immediate denture after we do some tissue contouring and bone reduction here. So this is a great tool for uh, immediate dentures. The design for immediate dentures is simplified by utilizing the pre-prep scan and overlay function, allowing the user to set the denture teeth using the existing teeth as a guideline, as you can see in this uh, slide right here. That's amazing. So we utilize the existing denture teeth as a gu guideline for this immediate denture. Let's talk a little bit about um, materials. If, you know, if you're familiar with the IVA based system, the physical properties and material are comparable to the IVA based uh, high impact denture based material. So we have two materials we're going to be utilizing the IVA based CAD and the VivaDent CAD if we're milling denture teeth. It's a PMMA, PMMA material with high impact resistance and flexural resistance. And it comes in a variety of shades. With great physical properties, the same physical properties that you're used to in the, uh, uh, the other base system. The accuracy of fit is uh, phenomenal. Minimal deformation after, after milling. We even have some uh, experts at uh, Ivoclar telling us that the feedback they've been getting from dentists is that they're sometimes they're eliminating post-dams on, on upper, upper cases because the fit is so accurate. And as far as the, um, the, the tooth discs, you know, it's the only approved tooth colored disc for permanent denture teeth. It's the same material that you saw before with the, uh, uh, the Avaclar denture teeth. It's the same material that we have in the, in the, uh, uh, in the discs. So let's look at aesthetics for a second on these denture teeth. And I'm going to put up uh, these anterior teeth. I'm going to split them down the midline here. I'm going to ask you what you think, which side you think uh, are the regular carded teeth and which side are the mill teeth. Really hard to tell. As you can see, the Vivid and CAD on the left hand side are the mill teeth, and the right side are the actual, actual carded teeth. So the anatomy on, on the, and the aesthetics on these teeth are phenomenal no matter what. You can either build them or use the individual denture teeth. Lower opacity, anatomical shape we talked about before with lingual anatomy and, and emergence profiles, and surface design. And there's our full arch mill with our uh, Vivident CAD material. And there's some uh, Vivident multi CAD material. It's, it's going to help us uh, adjust the translucency on these uh, types of uh, mill denture teeth. So we can I'm gonna click on here. You might be able to see it on the screen. So we can position this on a three-shape software and adjust the translucency. We can have a little less translucency, a little more. And what we see on the screen is exactly how it's gonna come out on the, on the final day. Great innovations on the software. 
And bonding teeth in the denture paste, you know, the, the bonding of these denture teeth, uh, it is an ICAD bonding material. It's an auto curing polymerization material. And the chemistry has been changed to make it more fluid and extend the working time to about 10 minutes. Uh, this allows the material to penetrate the mill components to polymerize the denture to the denture base with a fantastic bond. And this is some of the equipment we utilize for the um, mill uh, uh, ProFX denture. Proker mill PM7. And let's just touch on this uh, denture workflow again, the milk denture workflow. So we're scanning and designing our case. And now we have the option of uh, milling a, a, a denture base and applying and uh, uh, bonding denture teeth. Or we can do something called the oversized milling process, where we'll partially mill the denture base and the denture teeth. So we do vestibular milling on the denture base and oversized milling of the dental, dental arch with this, uh, with the, um, even in CAD. Then we'll bond it to the denture base utilizing the uh, ICAD material we've talked about before. And then we do a, something called a fine milling and takes about nine, nine, 90 minutes. This is going to do a final milling and it's going to actually produce a denture where you won't have to finish, finish this at all. So what you see in the software is going to come out, it's going to come out exactly on this final denture. So all you really have to do is polish the denture. About 20 minute labor, labor time and 150 mil, minute milling time. And these are some of the dentures I've done, the final mill dentures. You can see the aesthetics are beautiful. The, uh, uh, the gingival anatomy is beautiful also. There's something new coming out in the coming months, which is going to be really changed and be a game changer for a lot of us, is uh, something called the uh, uh, Ivotion. And Ivotion is a, a new denture puck by Avatar. And I don't have any really detailed, um, fine definition, uh, high definition photos here, but it's just to show you what this is about. Uh, you have a denture base material and a denture tooth material in one disc. And it's a unique shell geometry that they utilize to do this. So we'll be able to mill our denture teeth and our denture base in, in one, one mill. And that's going to save a lot of time and it's going to be really a real game changer for all of us. We call it shell geometry and the material is iVotion. We'll, we'll keep you posted. I think they expect to come out with this material, I think May or June. So we'll keep you posted on this material. Can we make a better denture? I believe we can. Why choose mill dentures? Well, pretty much the same re reason as we chose the uh, printed dentures. You know, accuracy or fit, bacteria resistance, great functional occlusion, electronic record, fast turnaround time, few manual steps, and consistent quality. And we have the uniformity of thickness and thinness on these dentures. So we have the same uh, uniform thickness at all times. So uh, we don't have to worry about that excess of thickness, especially on a pallet wearing. The monolithic strength, it's eight times stronger than the traditional analog denture when we're utilizing a full arch mill of denture teeth. That's, that's phenomenal. That's, that's amazing, that strength on these, on these dentures. Both the printed and mill denture have uh, amazing strength. The aesthetics are beautiful. I'm going to show this short video here with Dr. Frank Lascelli, how when he's inserting these dentures. Hey, Dennis, we were unable to hear the audio on the video. Oh yeah, it's very low. Yeah, it's a low audio. So yeah, it's just, I want to just show the uh, you know, patient going into excursions. Um, and then you'll see the doctor trying to remove this from the patient's mouth. And basically he's just telling the patient to tap, 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 and then move from side to side. They actually have suction on the lower denture. Great retention there. So as you can see, the fit form and function on these dentures are amazing. I just want to touch a little bit, and I have a few minutes left here, on the, on the Ivoclar Advanced Digital Denture Workflow. We talked about the simplified workflow earlier, and I'm not going to try not to get you confused with this, but there's, there are other options that we can utilize uh, as, with this uh, digital denture workflow. And basically, on the first appointment, we're using, uh, utilizing an anatomical impression and a pre-bite registration with a, something called a centric tray. 
and a UTS CAD. I'll go into this de detail in a few minutes. But so the first appointment, you will be getting the uh, impression, a centric tray bite, and a UTS CAD um, uh, illustration. And we're going to scan and design this when it comes back to the laboratory. We're going to actually uh, print a bite plate utilizing the scan that we just did. In the second part, we'll have to take a functional impression inside that, uh, that, base, that base plate that we printed, and we'll take a bite registration, or you have the option of using a, a, a gothic arch tracing device. Once you get all that information, you can send it back to the laboratory, we scan, and we, then we do the rest of the uh, traditional digital workflow. This is a tr uh, printed try-in, we'll mill the denture, and then we'll insert the denture. So just, just as a review here, some of the clinical tools, Centric tray is for a preliminary jaw relation. The UTS CAD, it's gonna define the campus plane and bipupillary line. It's almost like a, a, you know, a, a face bow, but not as involved. The 3D bite plate or natometer is a gothic arch tracer, that's optional. So not to get everybody confused, you could utilize what I talked about before with a simplified approach, <clears throat> or we have these clinical tools we have now in our, in our fingertips. So again, the centric tray, gonna record preliminary and centric vertical dimensions. That UTS CAD is going to attach that centric tray and we're going to capture the campus plane and the bipupillary line. And this is going to help us with the plane of occlusion and also reduce any, any uh, risk of canting on these dentures. That information is going to be put into the uh, software, as you can see on the lowest part of the screen. And then that 3D bite plate is going to be printed and we can take our occlusal records and a functional bite impression uh, on that second visit. Uh, we can also utilize something called a napometer CAD, and that's a gothic arch tracing device, and that everything goes into the scanner, and all information is put into the software, and we can utilize this to make our uh, make our denture. So we have all these other tools that we can utilize uh, uh, in making this denture, this digital denture, and all this information that you're, you're utilizing and capturing at the, at the dental office at the operatory. You can write down on this special denture digital uh, digital denture prescription. We'll then enter all this information into the, uh, our software, and it'll help us make that digital denture. So we have the UTS CAD, the nathometer, papillometer. All those readings are entered in. Those readings are put into the, uh, uh, the software. So it's another option. It's not necessary, but it's another option you can util utilize when you're making a, a digital denture. Advancement in denture technology. We've come a long way, and I'm, you know, I think we're all excited about where we're going with digital denture technology. And we're trying to achieve the ultimate goal of patient satisfaction. With that, I want to thank everybody for uh, uh, attending today's webinar. I'll take any questions you may have at this point. We do have um, two in the Q&A. Um, and then right after I ask this first question, I will post up in the chat box the link referenced on slide 179. But the first question is, what is the risk of the teeth debonding from the denture base and how complicated is it to repair? Good question, good question. Well, as far as the, uh, the debonding, this, the technology they have now with both, both uh, the dent supply system and the Avoclar system, it actually is fusing that denture to the denture base. And you can look at some of the uh, testing that online and some of the YouTube videos uh, that's on, on their websites. Uh, but yeah, I, was, I would say the risk is really extremely low with this. If something does happen with this um, material, uh, it breaks, a denture tooth does break, you can utilize a, 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 that fused tooth material or that bonding agent material on the Arvaclar to actually do a repair on these and, and add denture teeth. And our next question, can these dentures be realigned the conventional way? The answer, the answer is yes. Yeah, we take, if you, if you have to use a bonding agent uh, when you're use, you utilizing this convention, the conventional way. Um, I've had doctors uh, do this uh, chair side, actually do chair side relines with soft liners and uh, other materials, but we've also done laboratory relines with these dentures. Great, thank you. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to launch the, we have a couple more questions in the queue, but I'm going to launch the final polling question just to give us a little more feedback. Do you feel more comfortable prescribing a milled or printed denture? We're curious if you feel more comfortable prescribing a milled or printed denture. 
And we're at about 20% participation. Again, if you would not mind, please, do you feel more comfortable prescribing a milled or printed denture? Give that a couple more seconds before we end the poll. And with 40% voting, we are at about 63% milled and 37% printed. Okay, that's good information. Thank you so much, everybody. You know, and uh, and again, thank you for, for uh, sharing this with us today, uh, getting on the webinar with us. I, I hope I gave you some great information here, and that's some 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 of this information that will be useful in the future. And if you have any questions, there's my email address on the screen here. You are, you can you're welcome to email me with any other additional questions. But thank you again for your time, and really happy to have you on today. There's more, Dennis. Okay. <laughs> we have more questions. Thomas. We have All a question right. and I can answer yeah. this uh, aside from the lecture recording, may we have access to these slides. Um, as DSG is ramping up our um, education series, we are looking to be able to send the recordings outside of our um, company. Please look for us publishing out a YouTube channel. Please note that if you do pass that along, no CE will be issued for recorded presentations, only our live presentations. And we will not be sharing the PowerPoint. However, Dennis has the open invite. Please email him at durban at dentalservices.net. He's more than happy to answer any of your questions. Um, and then the next question we have, Dennis, is where do I buy the jaw relations tools? Uh, that you can get through Ivaclar. Ivaclar has a whole, whole kit. You know, they have uh, a few different kits out. They can buy them individually. UTS CAD, uh, you can buy separately. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I've, you can buy that directly from uh, Ivaclar. And they have the Gothic, Gothic Arch tracing, tracing device uh, and also um, the Nathometer and every, all the tools you need that I talked about at the end of the seminar. Great, thank you. And then uh, the looks like right for now, the last question is the printed denture material, a long-term material? What is the bacterial resistance on this material? That's a good question. And uh, if you go to the, uh, this, this particular material from Densply, it's a long-term material. It's, uh, it's a printed long-term material. That's why it took so long to come out with it. The, the printed materials that are out there uh, a few years ago from other companies, they really bacteria attracted, attracted bacteria. They were brittle um, and they didn't have any flexural strength or, uh, or, or high impact strength. Uh, so with this material from Densply, it's a revolutionary material. Yeah, so it, it's not doesn't attract bacteria. Yeah, so it's uh, it's a long term material. Really, and it works really well. The feedback from patients who have uh, clinical trials and the patients that have had this uh, for a while have been phenomenal. You know, so uh, but uh, yeah, if you go, with it, there's a lot of testimonials I think on on the Densply website also with this material, uh, and they they show some more graphs and and some um, different testing results on there also. Great, thank you. And do we have any other questions for Dennis? It looks like it's, um, that was it. Thank you so okay. much Dennis for your time and your wonderful knowledge during this presentation on getting the edge on removables. And I hope everybody got their edge. Uh, so with that we would like to say um, goodbye. Have a wonderful day. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye now.